All right, I've got the first uh, part of my um, practical check ride marked out on my map. I have to buy a, a New York sectional chart because the route goes off from the Washington sectional to the uh, New York sectional, which from what I've heard, examiners will often do that to make sure that you can plan a route and, tr and find a good transition point so that you're following your route on your map and you plan it properly so you can uh, switch charts and not get turned around or lost or whatever. So I've planned out the route as far as the uh, portion that's on the Washington sectional um, just to get my brain wrapped around it and uh, get that familiarity with it. I was fortunate that I had got this route a week and a half, almost two weeks out. Um, from what I'd heard, sometimes you get it as few as three days ahead of time. Um, I mean, obviously on a normal, a normal ride on a personal trip, you know, the night before is not even an issue, but you know, when you're planning for your first check ride, it's nice to have that extra time. And I certainly got that. So this is the uh, Washington section. I marked out my, my route and some of the visual checkpoints along with the uh, black line for my route. And I practiced a couple diversions in my test prep flying the last two weeks. But I mean, this is like a critical thing and the quicker you can execute this process, the better off you are. And uh, the least amount of thinking and, and visual time eyes down that it takes you to do that you're much better off because when you're practical, you have to hold your altitude. Uh, you have to hold your heading and your, um, your attitude, especially when you're doing tasks, uh, such as planning a diversion. And then also, if you're flying along your route and you've got a good visual checkpoint and you're told to divert, you need to use that visual checkpoint ahead of you slightly, preferably so that you configure your azimuth to your diversion, your distance to your diversion, and how long it should take you to get there based upon your current airspeed and ground speed. And as soon as you get that heading, turn the airplane to that heading, start your clock, and then figure out your winds and travel time because the further you get away from that, that known hard visual checkpoint, the further you are away from that when you turn to your heading, the further off course you're going to be when you get there. And so as you're approaching your diversion point, you're looking for it based upon where it should be. If you turned on your heading from your visual checkpoint, and so you have to make allowances for how far off you were when you turned the airplane towards the diversion point. And that just ratchets up the stress incredibly. The first time I did a diversion, I had that. The last two times, uh, I pretty much nailed it. And it, it just takes a whole lot of stress off because then you're going to an airport you weren't planning on going to. You gotta switch your radios for frequencies, be looking for traffic, figure out the winds of what runway you're gonna go on to. You got a whole lot of other things to do. Um, aside from actually finding the airport. So let's say we're flying along from Carroll County. We're going up uh, towards um, Lake Hanover or Redmond Lake. I actually passed Lake uh, Hanover, and which is a real small lake, and then uh, Lake Redmond here. And we pass Lake Redmond and we're almost to uh, the, there's a little Dallas town reservoir, a real small lake, but it's got a real prominent dam feature. Uh, so say we're on there, he says, okay, divert me to Gettysburg. Well, because I plan my alternates, I know Gettysburg is over here to my left. So I'm flying the plane while I'm doing this. So um, I know uh, that I'm here, so I put my planning a diversion protractor the center of it over that dam or my known visual checkpoint. I generally get it lined up here and I bring the ruler over 
and I know I'm 276 degrees at about uh, uh, 17 miles. So 276 plus 10 is 286. I turned the plane to 286 degrees. I know I just said uh, I'm going to say 17 miles. Let's say we're going uh, a good average speed is roughly, uh, let's say we're doing really good, we're doing a, a 110 knots. So 9 minutes and 17 seconds. So as soon as I've got the 286 degrees, I turn the plane. And then I pull out my little spreadsheet that I made. And it's got all of the speeds from 70 knots to 120 knots and then the mileage across the top. So I said I'm doing 110 and we'll go with 17 miles. That means um, it'll take me 917 or nine minutes and 17 seconds to travel 17 miles. So I've already turned the airplane and started my clock. And then I find out this information and I'm just watching out the window looking at my checkpoints and I should see uh, York uh, on my right and then uh, the York Airport and then um, got the big uh, the highway here uh, I believe uh, 80 they're not marked on the sectionals what is that doesn't really matter because it's not marked when you're looking out the windshield of the plane but it's a major interstate here that I'm going to cross and then I'm fairly familiar with Gettysburg the city and then there's a big um, FCC communications building just past Gettysburg proper and just north of that is a couple egg-shaped neighborhoods and the airport is just past the first egg-shaped neighborhood and before you get to the other one so you kind of bracket those checkpoints, those visual markers out your windshield. You can kind of bracket those to find where you should be looking for the airport. This is an airport. It's roughly uh, 2,300 feet by, I think, 50 feet wide. From the air, it looks like a large driveway. Um, if you're flying for nine minutes, and you don't know about where the airport lies in relation to the city, the roadways, the major buildings outlining the city. If you're looking just for the airport, unless you're extremely familiar with it, it's going to be extremely hard to find. Because it, from the air it looks like about as wide as your finger and about as long as your pinky. So, um, Bracketing visual landmarks to look for when you're flying VFR visual flight rules on a diversion it is critical. Um, so again, we're flying along and, and this is generally how it would go and, and it helped to dry run even the engine out maneuvers and, and emergency checklists and stuff sitting at home with your equipment and just running through things can be really helpful when it comes to actually doing it in the air. So we're flying along and, and you know, and I'm only guessing where diversions would be based on a route, which isn't cheating because anytime you plan a route, you should plan it where you have options. So if there's a southern route and there's a northern route, and on that southern route, there's just no airports or only small grass run runways, which you basically have to know the airport and have be very familiar with landing there to find it because obviously it just looks like some farmer's field or somebody's nice manicured yard. Um, it's really difficult to tell where this airstrip is unless you have uh, the... Um, Benefits of GPS and at this route during at this point during the check ride, you're not going to have your uh, GPS equipment available He's gonna the examiner is gonna turn those off to make sure that you can follow a chart in case you were 
on a trip after you get your license and your electrical equipment fails. Um, they want to know you can get it back on the ground safely. You Back to the route planning, if it's a southern route or northern route, the southern route doesn't have airports except for grass strips. The northern route does. They want to see you plan that northern route. That way I've got Gettysburg is close, York is close. Um, there's a couple smaller, very small airports, which I wouldn't land at unless it was an emergency, but a small airport that is a challenge to land at is better than no airport in a, in a, in a, a, a cornfield. So there's those. And then I know I've got uh, Smoketown Lancaster Airport. I've got Morgantown. I've got um, Chestertown. I've landed there. Uh, Pottstown. You know, I've got all these airports within that five nautical miles either side of my route. If I go northern route, I don't have that if I'm going the southern route until I get all the way down in here approaching the uh, Sephra and the Class B. Uh, air airspace, uh, which presents all kinds of other challenges. So I, I chose a northern route. And so as I'm route planning, I'll, I'll, I'll get all of my locations and everything for my intended route. And then I'll go back and look in that t five mile corridor on either side and get an idea what airports are available. And I'll write those down or save them in my software so that I can easily recall them. In case you get up at 5,000 feet, your engine's starting to run rough or your electrical's going and you need to put it on the ground, you have an idea where you're going. So really anytime you have a situation like that, that's why it's part of the test, is when you do a diversion, it shouldn't be something you're like never heard of or, or are unfamiliar with. So say we're flying along and we're and um you can see that I can uh, dead reckon, which is using um, time and a azimuth magnetic heading, and uh, pilotage, which is looking out the windshield for visual landmarks and navigating by them. He's making sure I can do that along the route, hitting my checkpoints within reason. And then at some point, once he feels I'm 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 okay with that. Is gonna say divert me to so and so. So say we're flying along. We are. We've passed um, the second checkpoint. Say we're roughly over uh, the city of Red Lion, which is south of York. He says, "Okay, divert me to Gettysburg." This is always in my uh, knee board. Put it down over the center of red line or if I think I'm north, slightly north or slightly south of it. Do that. I flip my map out to give me some more map. Red Lion Gettysburg is 262 so add magnetic variation 272. I turn the airplane to 272. If I got my autopilot on I hit the heading button and turn the heading bug uh, on the directional indicator to 272 otherwise I got to do it by hand and, and keep an eye out. So I turned the plane to 272 